Hi, I'm here with Mitch on the side of the camera, and this is my shop. Welcome. Our project today is a, a Philip Braised ICR stem. ICR stands for internal cable rig. Here's a couple of oldies. I started making stems back in 86 when I started Rudy Bikes. This one has ICR. You can see where the cable goes in, cable comes out. So that's what we'll be making today. These are the pieces. It's chrome molly. We've got an extension tube. This is too long. We've got a clamp tube and a quill tube. These are the two sizes of the quill tube. This is for an inch headset. This is for an inch and an eighth headset. So we're going to use the smaller one for an inch headset, old style. That's the project for today. So that's what it looks like when it's mitered. So I need to go out to the belt sander, need to take off the burrs, sand it up a little bit. So the stem we're making today is a 7 8 quill. So we're going to use this, 130 millimeters long, and the rise is 20 degrees. So I'm going to use this sheet right here, and that's what's going to help me to determine how long it's going to be. I take the, uh, the clamp tube, I put it on the 130, and I put the extension tube on there. And then I can make a mark right here on the center line. I'm marking where the center line of the quill tube is. That's, that's my hacksaw cut right there. i put that right in the middle. And can you see here how I took a, a regular clamp like you get from Home Depot or whatever and I welded on this little V-block there because the V-block goes onto the tube, holds it very well. And then I can put a little bit of tension on there. What I'm looking for here is the right spacing. I want equal spacing on either side. And when I've got that, a, a little TIG weld there, a little TIG weld there, just about that long, maybe five eighths of an inch. Then after that, everything is fillet braised. The stem goes like that, so we need to overlize this way. It's easy to get mixed up sometimes when you're overlizing, so we're going to overlize this way. So this is going to go like that, squeezing this way. That's how far we want to come down. You can see it, it's quite a gap, it comes down quite a bit. I screwed up. I didn't have the blocks in the right place. Well, I didn't have the ram in the right place, and the blocks exerted some force on the tube and you can see how I screwed up the tube. I made a mistake. So I had to find some more tubing and start over again. This is this is the second piece here, okay? I got my ovalization all smooth I did not indent the tube so what happened was I had it it too far this way I needed to have it more that way so I'm putting force on the end of the tube and not force all along the tube if you're not careful it's easy to make mistakes I have a little piece of cold rolled here it's uh, a 3 8 OD we got to drill some holes in it because it's gonna get a tube I have a tube then after I drill the holes, I put in the tube and it gets nickel silvered in there. So off to the lathe. I have three different drills to use. So I, I use the small one. It goes all the way through because that's what the cable runs through. And then on the end, I've got a 3 16th drill because that's the tube that gets inserted. 
And then on the other side is the larger one. That's where the brake cable goes into it. Here's the setup. I've got this little holder here. It holds the cable stop. And you can see here how the tube fits in there. So I put it up on top like that. Then I, I, can, I can spin this around and I just need to put a tiny little fillet right in between here and here. So obviously the cable stop is larger than the tube. So I'm putting most of my heat on the cable stop. If you heat them both the same, it'll make the tube overheat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it where it needs to be mitered because when I put that like that and I know my angle of 20 degrees, I'll put a mark right here. See in line with the front of the quill tube. That's where I want the hole saw to go. So the hole saw is going to go right against that line there. So I need the miter to be at a perpendicular angle uh, to the clamp tube. So that's, that's partly why this clamp tube gets welded onto the extension tube first. Because when I hold this in the vise here, these vise jaws are going to hold this perfectly in line with the perpendicular. So I need to hold this now. I need to put some spaces in there. I don't want to use anything hard. So I got thinner leather, I'll try that. I just need to hold it because if I hold it only here, it'll vibrate. Yeah, see that? That's held. It's slowly coming together. So that's basically the shape of the stem. So I have to knock off the burrs now. And I'm not going to weld this on right away because we have to work on the cable routing now, internal cable routing. I'm using my template again, my, my piece of cardboard. So if I put this on like that and I line everything up, <coughs> then the hole is going to go right there. So there's a little trick. How, how do you know where to mark this? Where is the very top? of the two. Well, I'm going to show you that. It was something I used to ask my students, I'd say, in Frame Building 101. I'd say, how do you mark the top of the tube using only a ruler? There's no measuring, no felt pen, nothing. And they would scratch their heads for a while. Occasionally, one student would figure it out, but most of them I had to show them. You take the ruler, you hold it level at a 45, and you just pull. And that is the top of the tube. I punch lightly. I make sure it's where I want it to be. And then I give it a bit of a whack. Okay, so it's punched right in the middle. We'll go to the drill press. So I got a, I got a 3 16 tube, so I'm gonna go one size larger. You metric people will hate this. It's 1364s. So this is basically how the internal cable routing works. This is the cable stop. That's the cable stop that I'm going to use. I just use this to help me figure out where it goes. And this one here has to be bent. i got to get the flux off. I have to bend it. So this looks like it's... Uh, this looks like it's pretty good, so we're going to go for that. I'll just make a couple marks here. Right there and there. And we're going to put, we're going to make a slot in between there and there. So the slot's going to go on, on this side here because on your front brake, you use your left hand. Most people use their left hand. So the cable swings around and it arcs in from the right. If you have it on the left, it's too sharp of a bend. It's not nice. 
what this does is I have a tool that comes down that makes the slot and, and because, the, because the tool is hitting this at an angle it wants to bend out. It wants to flex the tool even though the tool is fairly strong. So this piece here, it gets set at the right height to hold the tool in line. So you can see how the stem, how the clamp tube fits over this. So what I do is I mount this, this piece of carbide, it's a quarter inch rod basically, I mount that into the chuck, put the chuck in there and then I've got a measurement here, it's 2.5 inches, I have to move this over 2.5 inches and, that, and then I should be in the right position to make the slot. Got the mandrel and then I take, I made up this little piece here that holds like, like that and I just bring this around. See how that bends? Bends nicely. Because this comes in at an angle like that, it forces this off at an angle so I need to bend this a little bit. If you look around here, can you see how this is the holder and it, can you see how this comes down? It's like a little ramp going down. So when I hold that there, see how I put a little kink in the tube like that? It's not a kink, it's, it's just like a tiny little bend. Can you see how that works now? This is straight up and down and this comes out at an angle. So what I'm going to try and do now is to, is to feed the tube in there. This is handy sometimes because you have to put a little bit of force on it. There we go. So it's in there and if you look inside, can you see how the tube is coming straight out? It's not coming out at an angle either way. That's what you want. That's good cable routing. I have to hold the quill tube onto the extension tube so I'm going to use good old fashioned masking tape. So I'll do a little tic tac, little tic tac and then I'll do a little weld down the side where the two tubes are the same size and then we'll go over to the brazing stand. I'm making the wells nice and flat. I'm not lumping them up so it's easier for the braze to go over. Still a little warm from the tick welding, but not bad. Get some heat inside there. Okay, fillet brazing, this is the rod. It's a 330 seconds bare bronze rod. And then what I'm gonna do is I put some rod on one side and then on the other. It's a little, little bit like I say army golf, left, right, left, right, because as I put it on one side, it allows the other side to cool a little bit. If you wanna be successful, there's basically three things you have to consider. The size of the cone, and the distance of the cone from the workpiece and the angle of the cone and it all depends on what you're doing which part of the bicycle frame if you're working on a bicycle frame okay so we come full circle here and there's a fillet breeze so basically what I want to do is to get a centering groove 
that tells me where the center of the fillet braise is and then I want to work on the arc and that's when I start edging out. I don't want to go on the steel much at all because the worst thing you can do is to undercut the steel, weaken the tube. You have to be very careful with this. So there's my centering groove. It's smooth. And what I do now is to, I call it edging out. You're putting a little bit of sideways force on there and, and blending it in with the tube. So that's what I'm looking for. A nice radius and it blends in with the tube. So I've done about almost a quarter, just have to finish it off. I've got a quarter inch wide, wide belt sander. I made this a long time ago, so I saved myself about 400 bucks, because if you buy the real thing, it's 700 bucks. This is how you change belts. See there's a little spring there? That's a worn out belt. Put the new belt over top. Make sure that you got the grid on the outside. A little noisy, but it does a nice job. What you need to do with this is to ease in and to ease out. If you just go back and forth, you, you can end up having a ridge on the side. So it's important to ease in, ease out. So how this system works is, is the spiral roll, because it's pretty firm, it makes the shape the belt sander because it's so flexible it follows the shape and it smooths it all out that's what makes it beautiful we've done the spiral roll we've done the quarter inch belt sander the last step is using emery cloth I had a student in frame building 101 his name was Mario he had a sense of humor he named this fine fingering so it stuck this is what gives it the final, the final smoothness. Okay, we're heading into the last stages now. We have to put on the pinch lug, cut the slot, and do the cutouts for the bar. And the pinch lug is a little bit of a lump of metal, so I put a little extra heat on there. gone all around it's smooth one slot okay so the last thing to do is to take a hole saw and to cut a notch out of there because if you put in a, a set of curved handlebars you have to bring the bar through and if the tube is too long you can't that won't work and you don't really want to put a screwdriver in there and pry that apart to get the bar in There we go, all mitered up, a little bit of sanding. So there we are, one ICR stem, it's fillet braised. Hope you enjoyed watching this, hope you learned something. See you next time, thank you.